church. When we had them last year, maybe not all of you were here, but we had them on a Sunday and they had just recently gotten married and we were just so blessed. But the Lord said to invite them without knowing them, without just through Facebook. And, and it was just such a pulling. I couldn't, you know, I kept saying like, oh, we, you know, so finally pastor gave us the green line and we had them come, but now they're celebrating the year. And, you know, they're so transparent in everything that they share in their marriage and the things that they've gone through and just their faithfulness to the Lord. And, you know, yeah. I love it for them. Um, just, um, just the truth of the word and revealing your hearts and, and the transparent and the things that you go through to get there. You know, to have a good marriage, it takes work. It doesn't just happen. Amen. It takes each person doing their part. You right. know, sometimes, so many times, it's one person gives more than the other. And even with friendships, you know, sometimes you want to receive the call, but do you ever call and say, how are you? Do you ever, you know, look for to others? And it's just a give and take. So, and even with the Lord, you know, we always sometimes want, 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 but we got to give. And he's worthy of all the honor and glory. Mm -hmm. So now we have um, ministers, Omar and Mabel. They're going to come up and minister. They're actually from Praise Chapel. Um, they are committed. God's using them and, and just big and even small ways. You know, we just thank God for their lives and them, their um, faithfulness and obedience in coming to speak today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. God bless you. It's so nice to see everyone here. And I'm so blessed and honored and thankful first to our Lord Jesus Christ and pastors for inviting us with such a warm welcome. Um, just blessed to see all of your beautiful faces. I know that God's going to do something amazing today, this morning. Um, because he gets all the glory Amen. and I'm so thankful because he's brought us through so much and I know each and every one of you have testimonies each and every one of you have something to be thankful for um, and just give him praise and thanks for what he's brought you through and what he's going to continue to do in your lives um, and so um, this is my husband Omar I'm Mabel <laughs> We come from Praise Chapel Whittier. Um, it, we have a year already, a little over a year being married. And so it, it hasn't been perfect. <laughs> you know, um, I, I was asking my dad, I'm like, well, you know, they're going to be 50 years in January. And I'm like, dad, what is the secret, you know? <laughs> And he's like, I, I only married your mom and that's it. Like there's no one else. I'm married to her for life, you know, and that's it. I married your mom and, you know, um, and every time he's, he answers the same way, he's like, I'm, I'm with her, she's, she's my wife. Like I don't have another wife but, but her. <laughs> and so they've gone through their battles and I've seen them but they've been an example you know, to my life and to my sister. And um, I'm so thankful, you know, to God for, um, you know, now that they're older, it's like, you know, they, they, they're like, oh, my knees, oh, this, oh, but you know, um, they're, they're, they're together. And I said, you guys are together and you're still healthy and God's brought you a long way. <laughs> And so we're, we're declaring that for, for us, you know, we'll probably be a hundred and something years old, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, I have three, you know, key points that I wanted to, um, you know, communicate as far as what God's done for us and our marriage and, uh, 
and then this is what the Lord was speaking to me about um, yesterday, this whole, you know, just this whole week, he just started putting this message together. And he said, you know, one of the greatest challenges is to be patient, you know, to, to be patient, to pray, be honest and communicate. And, you know, the problem today now with couples is, you know, we don't know how to, to, to survive just the smallest little things. It was easy for us to do it when we were single, you know, but now, you know, it's, we, we got to work on this together. And we got to remember, we're not our, each other's enemy, you know? We can't go and, and complain, um, and, and we're not each other's enemy. Amen. And sometimes we forget that. And then, you know, nowadays it's so easy for just to be like, uh, in the beginning, I, I wanted to leave. I, I want, I'm like, you know what? I can't handle this. He's acting a fool, God. Um, I don't know what you, why you put me in this, you, you right? I mean, we complain about that. We, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's okay. It's okay, but go to God. Go to God and tell him. Go to God and tell him that he's acting a fool. You know, go to God and tell him and, and pray for him. It was so easy for me to be like, I got a house. I can go back to my parents. They'll take me back in. You know, the enemy tries to put this in your head, right? That's the first thing that he tries to do and bring division into your marriage and say, oh, it's okay. Let's go back to the comfort zone. You have everything over there. You're, you know, you have open doors. You have a room there, um, you know, and... And he wants that. Like when, when it's a kingdom purpose and God has a purpose and a plan for you, he's going to do everything much more so to bring division into that unity. That's a kingdom unity that's going to uplift other couples and bring them through their struggles that didn't have the Lord. But how much more powerful is it for a kingdom couple? You know, um, my, my dad could have been like, you know, it's, I'm a daddy's girl. So I know that he's going to be like, just come home and have, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. Uh, you know, and so, but it, as a dad, he's going to want to do everything to make me feel comfortable. I'm his daughter, right? But I can't rely on an earthly father. I have to rely on my godly father. I have to rely on the Lord because I have to run to him. I have to run to him, but I know he's going to fix it. That dad can only fix only, you know, so much, but Father God can fix it. Father God can, can uplift me and give me the wisdom and give me the words and the strength to be like, no, no, you lying devil, you get your hands off of my mind, off of my thoughts, and we're going to work this out because we made a commitment under the Lord. Amen. You know, and marriage is a process. It does take work. It takes work and patience. You know, we both had to learn how to be patient. And recently, so so recently, um, this is how the Lord's dealing with patience with me and my husband. And I know for, for the men, you know, um, that's why I pray for my husband. Lord, I pray for patience because we went through to three different stores just so that I can find some sneakers, right? I wanted to get some comfortable, cool sneakers. That was, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and did I buy any every time that we would? No. No. I mean, women, you know, right? It's like red, blue, pink, and they have them on all colors. Like, you, I'm like, I can only afford one right now, but do I really need the other five colors? And so this is the debate that I have. And he's watching me, and I'm like, I feel the pressure. Like, let's just go. This is why I'm not going to take you with me. <laughs> I'm going to go shopping by myself <laughs> because I can feel you right here. I'm not telling you anything. I can feel you. I know that you're like watching me try to pick out a color. And so I'm like, let's just go. Let's just go. Um, and then I end up going, you know, online and getting the shoes that he originally picked in the first place, right? <laughs> But that's been patience with him. That's been patience, you know, and, and I've had to have, I've had to have patience um, with him having patience. <laughs> so the Lord's had to, to, you know, minister to me to have patience with him. Because the thing is, we all bring something into the marriage, right? And there's things where like sometimes, and these are little things. 
But when something is so serious in the marriage, those little things become huge. Like the finances. And I want to talk about that. But before I talk about that, let me go into the word because I want to give you the word where it says in Proverbs 15, 18, it says a hot tempered person stirs up conflict. But one who is patient calms quarrel, calms a quarrel. And, you know, in Christ, we are called to be humble, right? But how hard is it for us to be humble and, and be able to hear from God when we're listening to all our emotions? And I'm talking to the women because we got a lot of emotions. And we got we to gotta process it differently. And most of the time, we want, we want to be heard. We want to be, you know, I always tell them, what did I just say? I'll tell him probably four or five times, and he doesn't have to fix anything, right? To the men, they, you guys don't have to fix anything. <laughs> but listen, just listen. And if we know that we're being heard, and if he, and if he repeats back what I just said, then I'm like, oh, okay. But that frustrated him. <laughs> He's like, every time. <laughs> but you know, we, we are patient bearing with one another in love. And, and, and it's like, that's how God wants us to show our husbands love. He wants us to show our partner love. But if we don't have the love, if we don't go to God and spend time with the Lord, how can we deposit that love back? We have to be filled with love in order to give that love. And, and, and it's so important to go before God and say, God, he's frustrating me. Like, I don't understand how to communicate with him. I don't understand how to tell him, teach me how to talk to him, you know, because there's certain things that you were able to deal with when you were alone, when you were single, when you were, you know, but now God is trying to teach you a different way. Now you have somebody else or whether it's with the partner or with the child, you know, God is trying to teach you a different way. How can I love them? How can I see them with the eyes of God? Because if I see them in my flesh, I'm, I'm gonna just wanna kick him out and put him in the dog pen, you know? And, and But if I see him and I, God, you know, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna sit here at your feet until you show me how to love him, until you show me, and the thing is, when, when you sit, before God, God will not, you're going to go pray for, I pray for my husband, but then the Lord starts end up showing something about me, about myself, and what I need to work on. And, and you know, you're blessing, it's a double blessing. You're blessing him, you're praying for him, and God's showing something about you, and now you can come together, now you have the peace to be able to see, now you have the clarity to be able to see with the eyes of God. You know, patience in marriage allows you to navigate through challenges and conflict with grace, compassion, and a deeper connection and, and a mutual respect. You know, when we don't have patience and we don't have the Lord in the middle, we don't have the respect for each other. We start losing respect for each other. And the minute that I start losing respect for my husband, you know, and, and women, we, we, you know, and, and I'm speaking to the women because I know that we do this. We have to uplift our husband. Don't, I, it's so easy for us to come in and nag when he gets home from work. It's so easy for me to say all the list of things that he hasn't done, that hasn't been done, that he needs to do, that probably, you know, that I'm worried about in the future, that hasn't even happened yet, and I have a whole list. But that, you need to be the ones to, to make the home. God has given you the wisdom, the grace, the beauty. You are the crown for your, for your husband to come in and set the atmosphere. Because when he comes in, you can, you can get your husbands to do anything with a sweet, soft voice. He can come in through when you guys can be arguing, but you continue to just stand your ground with God. He can continue to, to bicker and, and whatever he... Whatever's going on in, in, in his mind, if he's not treating you right, if he's, he, if he's not being that leader, but just with your, your attitude, like your Christ-like attitude towards him, that'll soften his heart. And, and if, even if you don't see it right there, God will, will show you. God will give you the patience. He'll give you the grace. He's back, I mean, he's right there. He's backing you up because you're seeking him. Yes. You're, you're being the bigger 
person seeking him and, and going before him. You know, ask God how to love your husband. You know, go before God. Say, show me God. Show me how to love him. You created him. So you know exactly what he needs. You know exactly what you need to put in my heart and how to pray for him. You know, there was a, a few times that he wanted to walk out the door. And, and um, you know, one time he, he got so upset that he threw the belt or he got a belt and he threw it at the fridge. And he's like, I'm done. I'm out of this. And he would get frustrated. So we would both get frustrated. Just imagine, two, it, like, there's a painting that I saw where it's too fit, too... Two people coming together, putting, you know, putting us together with two different lives that there's going to be, you know, some adjusting to do. Some, and, 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 and it takes patience. Um, you know, he, he wanted to slam, slam the belt and, you know, but, but it blesses me because he, I prayed for someone that is a, that is prayer warrior. I prayed for someone that is a man of God. And the Lord told me, you, you asked for a man of God, but there's certain things that we're still, we still need to grow. There's certain things that he still needs to go. I, you still need to grow and again, coming together, you know, and it's, it's like, it stop, starts off rocky, but if you continue to be pulled in, if you continue to, to be in the word of God and praising him and for God to give you the peace, you know, you'll be able to go through those uh, mountains that they won't look at mountains you won't look at them you'll look at them like valleys you you'll start to know like I already know this road God already gave me the wisdom God already gave me you know uh, the where, what I need to do he already ordered my steps and and it's like reminding yourself with the word of God you know that that he has control over the situation that he has control over your marriage yes, yes. Um, you know uh, and and again I just want to go back to where even the, the finances, because this is something that um, we we prayed about. It was so easy for us when we were single, living at home, living with mommy and daddy, as old as we are. <laughs> we ne I never wanted to leave the nest. I wanted to stay there. It was comfortable, you know. And and but God wanted us to to you know stretch out. And, and trust in him and not trust you know in our earthly fathers but trust in him and you know I, I mean we we look we you look young we're still young you know we're, we're young chickens still <laughs> but um you know it's it's you don't know and, and until you're walking through it and, you know, in, in Amos 3.3, 3 it says, Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. You know, and, and we have to make the time to communicate together. We have to make the time to come into agreement into God's promises and, and be in agreement. We can't just be like, well, you know, we don't have enough for this. Or, you know, it's going to cost us so much for this. Or look at the bills on this. But have we actually prayed about it? Have we talked, you know, have we gone before God? Have we, we spoken to God about it? Or, you know, are you just still in your place and he's in his place and we're not communicating to each other, um, coming together? We've had to learn how to pray together. We learned how to pray when we were single, but we had to learn to come together and pray together. And, and bring our petitions before the Lord and praise him together, you know, and, and it's, it's a step of faith because if you don't do it, you're never going to know what God is able to do for you. You're never going to, you're never going to get to that next level of faith. You're never going to see the power of God until you take that step of faith. That's all he wants you to do is take that step of faith. And once we were able to take that step of faith and come together, we were able to see double portion. You see the biggest blessing when you're married is you have a double portion. You're one, right? So if you're one and you're in unity, he's not going to bless just me and not bless him. He's going to bless both of you. You're both going to get a promotion. Amen. You're both going to get an, you know, an elevated promotion, whether it's in the finances or whether you're going to see salvations in your family. Like you're going to get a double portion because you're praying together. Um, 
and coming into uh, and coming into that agreement. And sure enough, you know, I know and I'm declaring for another increase. I know a year ago we talked about when we got married, we we you know, we got a raise, right? So we're expecting, both of us are expecting another raise. <laughs> it's, it's, it's around the corner. We're declaring it. It's just around the corner. Like, I know God's about to do something, you know? And, and, and you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. But, like, um, you know, we... And, and I say that because sometimes I think that he can... Um, I think that he can be a little crazy because he has these ideas. We'll be going and, and um, babe, let's go look at some sofas. Let's go look at um, these houses. He wants to go house shopping. And I'm like, well, we don't have the money or the finances for that. But, you know, and, and at, at times I'll, I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll make fun of him, right? And I'm being real. And, and I'm like, God, I don't know what kind of son you have here. He's really believing for something yes. big, and we, I don't see it, yes. right? But check this. But see, look. It says in First Peter 3, um, it says, uh, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, though, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine jewelry. It says, rather than it, it should be that of your inner self, the unafraiding beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is uh, is a great worth in God's sight. So, see, the way that God ministered to me with this word is, you know, by submitting to your husbands, is submitting to trusting the leadership, trusting his leadership. Amen. You know, I know that, like, my husband has gone through um, trials, through addiction, um, through the uh, relationship, and, but the thing is, you know, submitting and trusting, regardless of how you think of your husband, regardless if, if you're not getting if you're not getting along and he's acting a fool and he's not being that leader that you say, God, he's supposed to be leading me. He's not leading me. Why you know he's not leading me in a godly way, but trusting that God is working. Submitting submitting to him is submitting to God. So you're submitting to the God in him. You're declaring the God in him. You're declaring by submitting, you're submitting to God and believing and trusting in God that he's not going to act that way. That you're trusting that he's going to lead you correctly. A lot of times we have it backwards as women. And, and you know, we, we tend to want to take that role and, and probably take that responsibility instead of relaxing and saying, you know, God's going to take care of it. He's going to minister to my husband. We're going to get through this. Amen. Amen. So, you know, and, and with that said, he, you know, I know that God's going to bless us with the home, whatever home that, he, that the Lord is, you know, putting in his in his thoughts and um, that that what God has already spoken to him, even as crazy as I may think it, it seems. But I know it's not for God. I know nothing is impossible for the Lord. Um, and so the second thing is, you know, because I had said key points, be patient, pray, be honest and communicate. Um, pray. Pray. Prayer is so important um, when you're going through it. Prayer, you know, um, can get you through anything. When you pray, we pray for our husbands. And not only only opens the doors for transformation in, in their lives, but in ours, in our hearts. It changes how you handle the circumstances. It changes how you see him. It changes how you view yourself. It changes how you view the circumstances of daily life because one little small thing can impact your job, your children, your family, your attitude with everybody else that's around you. Um, and that's why we have to stay focused, prayed up in the word, you know, asking God. And again, ask God, show me how to pray for my spouse. Show me how to pray for him. Show me how to see him. If I... If if there's anything that I'm carrying in my heart, if there's anything that I'm holding on to, show me. 
Maybe it's something that you haven't forgiven and let go from when you were a child. Maybe there was something, there was a root there that God wants to deliver you from, that God wants to show you from, you know, uh, an abusive relationship before. Or maybe there was something there from, you know, your, your father or your mother. There was some kind of wound that God wants to set you free from in order to think clearly, in order to see, you know, your husband the way that God wants you to see him. But only going to him and seeking your face, you know, um, the storm will pass. It always does. It never lasts forever, even though you think that when you're in it, you're going to be in it forever. But it never lasts forever. And through prayer, you'll see the victory together. Amen. Together. And, you know, if God showed you favor and breakthrough, and I know each and every one of you have a testimony. If God showed you favor and breakthrough when you were single, when, you, you know, he brought you out of something, he's going to bring you through it so much more in a, in a godly marriage. He's going to bring you through it together. You know, I, I love to hear my husband. In the beginning, I didn't, you know, because he gets up like at 4.30 in the morning. He has his alarm before. He used to have five different alarms, but he's learned, right? He's learned, um, you know, to, to shut both doors, to go into the other room and pray, but he's still loud. I said, God still hears you, babe. He's loud. I'm like, God still hears you. He goes into the room, and it blessed me one day, even though I was laughing, and I can hear him praying, God, she frustrates me. I don't know what to do with her. And I'm laughing, but I'm thanking God at the same time because I can hear him <laughs> complaining to the Lord. And, and, you know, that's a blessing. Um, there's times even, um, that's why I say submit to your husbands. God knows what he's doing. Um, you know, and, and the third point is communicate, be honest. Sometimes I tell them, babe, you're such a square because, um, you know, you, you want to pay for, uh, he'll forget to pay for a bag for t that's 10 cents. And he'll go back and he'll pay for it. And so um, I get so frustrated. I'm like, come on, let's just go. Let's go. We got to go. It's like, no, no, no. I got to pay for it. But you know, that's something so small that God would honor. And, and maybe you might not, I might not see it then, but the Lord was showing me like, it, it's like God is trustworthy, right? So he's and, and put those characters within my husband, you know, that I see that now. Just in something so small that he's faithful, that gives me the peace that allows him to minister to me, that I'm able to shine because of his prayers, because of his honesty, because of his communication. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and communicate, and the last point, communicate. So it's, it's be honest and communicate. Communicate with your partner. Don't hide anything. There's no secrets. You guys are one, you are one. Um, you know, uh, in the beginning when we first, started courting um there was a um a ex-boyfriend of mine and we were talking and i didn't see anything wrong with it it was because we're friends now right so like it's okay to talk to him right so no <laughs> right it's it's not okay it's not okay because you shouldn't have any relationship with someone that your spouse doesn't know about that relationship. And if they feel uncomfortable, there's a reason. It's just you married your husband, he married you, and that's it. It's between two people, not two people and the ex, not two people and a friend that's the opposite sex. Like Because the enemy is so slick, he'll come in and start planting ideas, thoughts, and then there's the trust. There goes the trust. And then it's hard to get back in. And so, you know, even with, um, I know he's he's been married before. I've been married before. He has kids um, with um, the, his ex. And so it in the beginning it was hard for me because I never experienced that. He has four older kids and I, and I don't have any. So it was, it was really uncomfortable for me. But I'm so thankful because he prayed. He prayed, and he's like, I'm right there with you. I'm your husband. I'm right there with you. And it's so important that as wives, we're reminded of that. It's so important that the husbands remind you, you know, that pray for you, that, that you know, take the time and say, let me pray for you. Let's pray about this. Let's pray together. Be intentional. 
be intentional to pray together. Be intentional to stop right there. You know, because you can easily say like, oh, we'll pray. Well, yeah, 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 we'll pray. But we have to be intentional. Every time I'm going through something or he's going through something, we'll stop. We'll stop and we'll seek the Lord. He'll hold my hand. You know, not all the time, you know. He'll uh -huh. get upset sometimes. And then he's like, okay, I'll be right back. And I know that when he says he'll be right back, it's because I know he's, I said, go to your corner. <laughs> I know that he's praying. I know that he's praying, but you have to build that relationship. But you see, how do you build that relationship with your husband? You build that relationship with God. You build that relationship with God, with your husband, together. That's what sets the foundation. That's what sets the atmosphere. Um, you know, so remember, um, be patient, pray, and be honest and communicate. Um, and remember, prayer together builds intimacy with God and your spouse. Um, that's it. That's it. I'll hand it over to you. Amen. So, as we, um, as she shared that communication is definitely, um, you know, important in a marriage. You know, um, even when you communicate properly, even when it's when it's when it is um, uncomfortable, I want to encourage you, you know, to have that proper communication um, with your with your spouse. You know, I I, I myself, you know, because I'm a man. You know, she spoke on, on on the on the wife side, but I'm going to speak as a husband side because I'm a man. You know, and and as men, we get tempted. You know, we get tempted. And when you have that proper communication, trusting in God, not leaning on your own understanding. Amen. You know that when I, I, there was a time when I, you know, I love going to the gym. You know, I go to the gym, and you know, at the gym, as men, there's the opposite gender as well. You know, and I remember there was a time where I struggled. You know, when I, I, I mean, it was everywhere I was looking, there was just flesh everywhere. And, and, you know, and even though, you know, um, as a man of God, as, as I'm um, married to my wife, you know, one thing I've come to understand and to know that I want you and I to get an understanding this morning that, that the enemy's playground isn't secrets. It is. So I remember I had to communicate with my wife and tell her, honey, I need you to pray for me because I struggled. Nobody wants to do that, right? But, you know, the, 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 the scriptures is crystal clear is do not give the enemy a foothold. Right. Don't let him in. He's looking for that little cry for him to get in. So when I put on the apron of humility and I'm able to communicate with my wife, at, at the beginning she, she kind of laughed about it. I'm like, no. I go, I really need you to step up and be my wife. Amen. You know, and that's when she came in. And she laid hand, and, you know, she prayed for me. And, you know, because that is what marriage is all about. You build it brick by brick. Brick by brick. I wish I could come up here and tell you that I have been the, the, um, the bomb.com as a husband. But I, I was far from that. As I, you know, when we courted each other, it was easy because I, I saw her. All, all it was, I, I remember we were holding hands and... We got a little bit close and my leaders came up and like, yo, you're a little bit too close. <laughs> and that's the kind of leaders that we need in, life, in our lives. You know, that's what we need is someone that's going to come in and tell us what we need to hear. Not what we want to hear. We don't, we don't want, we don't want that. We need, we want something. See, in, in marriage, you know, as we begin to develop, you know, we have to be accountable. We have to be teachable. We have to be open to accept being corrected. Amen. You know, um, and I'm, I've learned that as um, a woman, a wife, you know, um, what you pour, what we as men, as husbands pour into our wives, you know, she's going to take it and multiply it and give it right back. The question is, what are you pouring into her? That's the question as men. You know, husbands, what are we pouring into our wives? 
If you pour, uh, if you give her a seed, she'll give you a family. If you give her, if you give her a house, she'll give you a home. Amen. You give her groceries, she'll give you a meal. Amen. The question is, what are we pouring into them? And I didn't know this at the beginning because I went through the process of courting. Now that I'm married, I'm excited. I haven't got nobody that, 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 that's going to get in between us and saying that we're too close. I'm like, oh, baby, it's on. <laughs> Can I be transparent this morning? Yeah. But little did I know that that was a process. And with every elevation, there is a process. Yes. And now that I'm married, I, you know, now we're living together. See, we waited until... We lived together, and then we did the husband and wife thing. But I didn't know that it was going to be hard. I didn't know that the two opposite personalities was going to clash head so much, so many times. And I remember, yes, I was, I did slam that belt on the floor. Yes, I did walk out. And then once I'm in the car and I'm driving, I didn't know where to go. But thank God for the Spirit of God that was right there with me, that, that convicted me and said, you need to go back. Right. Thank you, Lord. And I remember getting on the floor and I began to, Lord, touch her and I began to complain to her, to, to God about her. And all I heard is something I didn't want to hear. He said, the problem is not her, it's you. Amen. I'm like, wow. I didn't want to hear that. And then I heard God begin to put in my heart, go and ask for forgiveness. I stood on my knees on that floor for almost an hour, struggling just to make it to the room to say I'm sorry. And I remember once I did, and I went, honey, I'm sorry. She still gave me a sarcastic remark. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like, oh, Lord. But this is the thing. I didn't know back then that I was in a process. And I think about that in marriages today because just because we're ministry and functioning words in the church, that, we, that, that doesn't make us right with God. Our first ministry is in our marriage. Amen. We need to understand that, men of God, that our first ministry is in our wives, what we're going to pour into them. You see, I... I work in, in a prison. I'm a counselor. I'm a substance abuse counselor. And I, and I speak to a bunch of men. And God began to deal with me. And began to tell me. He's all like, you can't come here and be a leader if you're not leading your own home. Yes. Yes. Come on. Ouch. Amen. It's the truth though. You know, I come, I'm learning today that, that sometimes it, it feels like God makes it hard to be priest of the home. But when you stick in that process, you know, and one of the things that, you know, love, you know, and, and, and I think about Ephesians 5.25 when it talks about husband love your wives as Christ loved the church. And I'm like, wow, he was, he died for the church. Yes. So what does that tell you and I, men of God, this morning? How does he want us to love our wives? Not our love. Because our love will be like, where well, I brought the groceries, get to cooking. Yes. No, this isn't a 50-50 thing, uh, uh, people of God. This isn't a 50-50 thing, my friend. This is 100-100, that when she can't be 100, your 100 is going to make up for it. Yes. But in that process, the most important thing that you and I must do is surrender to God despite the circumstance and the situation that you may find in your marriage. Because I believe that, that, you know, it's easy to put on a facade and go to church and raise a hallelujah and come back home and act like a devil. Amen. <laughs> come on. Got that right. Come on. Yes. Amen. I know. You know, and, and, I, and, I, and God began to deal with me. I didn't know, you know, now that I think about it, from when we were courting each other, how we started developing leadership roles within me with my future wife at the time first, and now, you know, with my wife, and I, as we begin to grow together, because I'll be honest with you, you know, being married at times is so challenging. It's a, it is a character developing process, that's for sure. You know, at times to make my wife happy, it's like a moving target. 
But thanks be to God that I got the Spirit of God that enables me to do that what I cannot do with my own ability and strength. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember reading, um, this is my favorite verse now, but when I first read it, 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 it messed with me. It, it kind of bothered me. It's in 1 Peter 3, 7 when it says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. I'm like, oh, understanding. You know, that's one of the things that I, at times I struggle. Honey, close the window. Put it up. It's hot. It's cold. It's too cold. It's too hot. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> But it's here for a reason. I'm like, God, why did you put that there? Giving honor to the wives. Yes. I didn't like it. I'm, I'm being honest with you. As to the weaker vessel and as being heirs to God, of the grace of God, that your prayers may not be hindered. Right. Yes. This, this scripture here, it bothered me. You know, it, it, it messed with me. God, why did you have to put this scripture here? But when, when I begin to, the word says, you know, if my words abide in you. And once I allowed it to sink into my spirit, you know, it changed. My situation didn't change, but it began to change me inside. Now, that's why the word is there for you and I, you know, especially in our marriage, because it is challenging, my friend. It is hard, you know, but when you read the word and you allow the word, you know, to manifest in your heart, you will see that it will not change. Maybe your situation may not change, but you will view things a whole lot different. Amen. 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 You see, we walk by faith and not by sight. What we do as husbands, you know, is when we surrender to God, you know, and we, because Galatians 5, 16 through 21 talks about the works of the flesh. Yes. Right? And, and I know, I'm sure, maybe I'm the only one that has struggled in that area, especially in my marriage. That's why I say that marriage is for sure a character developing process. Mm -hmm. And you know, and if, and I think about that today, because when I struggle with it, that if marriages are saved, then why are marriages acting in particular ways? Why doesn't marriage's behavior reflect that they are saved? I know because when, when I first got married, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm at the church, you know, I'm a Bible study leader, and, and I'm like, you know, but I'm struggling in my marriage. And I want to encourage you today. I'm, I'm in unity, and it's something about unity that God loves. Amen. There's a reason why the scripture says when one, when two, they come together, they become one. Because when we're in agreement and we face adversity and we're both in union and we're both in agreement, then no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That if anything comes against us, we are both walking in unity, believing in God, that no matter what's taking place, He will see us through it. Loves unity. And what I want to talk about is what he dealt with me at first. And it's the fruits of the Spirit. You see, the fruits of the Spirit is the evidence that you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Or maybe, maybe you understand this. At one time, maybe you were a liquor or a beer drinker. And when you were under the influence of a controlled substance or alcohol, you act in certain behaviors. Am I right? Yes. So what do you think when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you would be under the influence of, of what? The fruits of the Spirit. marriage is in the flesh, then we're going to act and we're going to have particular behaviors that not reflect that we have Christ living in us. Mm -hmm. 
But this, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such thing there is no law. I don't have time to get through all the fruits. I'm hoping that you guys at least are, are, are one of these fruits to this morning. <laughs> but the fruit, when, when, when the fruit of the Spirit is manifesting in your heart, it is the evidence, it is the product, you know, that you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because I'll be honest with you, it is hard. It's hard for me to love my wife sometimes. It is. And I believe that God knew this. He knew that, that you know, that when that marriage was going to be a lifelong shaping process. Because there's going to be times when I don't want to love her. There's going to be times when she doesn't want to love me. But thanks be to God that we both don't feel the same way at the same time. <laughs> Glory to God. Matthew 7, 17, it says, even so every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. I mean, if we're in the summer and we're walking down the street and we see a tree that has a big um, grapefruit or orange, we're like, wow, that's a good fruit. Now, if we're under the action of the Holy Spirit, that's how we, you and I should be identified in our marriage. They're bearing good fruit. They're walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. I can see God in their marriage, you know, but it's going to take us as men, you know, to take it, the, the responsibility that God has given us to take care of our wives spiritually. Amen. And, and, and it, it's, it's been challenging. It has been. And, you know, and, and, I, and I think about the process that I have gone through. I'm like, wow, you know, I thought I was I thought I was loving my wife, but I was loving her in my own selfish ways. Come on. You see, the first fruit that Paul mentions right here is love. Which is not the love that we believe it is, but it is a love that is called agape love. Amen. You know, and this agape love that the scripture is talking about is the kind of love that you give without expectations. Amen. The kind of love that you would do something for your wife just because you want to do it without expecting anything back. Amen. See, I remember there's been a few times when I have done some things. You know, I've cleaned the house, I've done this and I've done that. And when I didn't get acknowledgement from my wife, I got frustrated. I was wrong. I was. <laughs> I was doing it with my own selfish way. That's, that's Omar's version of love. Yeah. <laughs> right? But in order for me to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit, I got to walk in surrenderance. I got to walk a connected to Him. I got to abide in Him and be knowing that He's going to abide in me. You know, I got to do all these things so that way when I do certain things, even though my wife don't respond the way I wanted to respond, I know I did it as I'm always doing it unto God. Amen. Because at the end of the day, my wife is still God's daughter. Yes. I got two daughters of my own. And I love them. I, won't, I don't wouldn't want nobody to do anything to them. How much more our Father in Heaven feels about our wives. Right. Being their daughter. Yes. John 13, 35 says, By this, all will know that you are my disciples, mm. if you have love for one another. Amen. You see, um, disciples means that you read the word and you follow what the word says. Yes. You allow the word to come into your heart and come alive within you. When I first got married, I really felt like I was getting stripped. Am I the only one? No. But today I could say I was not getting stripped. I was being stretched. Yeah. Mm. That's the part that we don't like. Ouch. I mean, we got, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us have kids here that when they begin to grow, their, their, their balls begin to wake because they're growing. I didn't know that, that God was stretching me in a way, you know, developed me, developing me to be who, I, who I'm called to be in Him, not to be the husband that I think I should be. 
I'm nothing without God. I'm here by the grace of God. I recognize that it was his hand that woke me up this morning. I recognize that he gives me what I don't deserve every day. His mercy wakes me up and his grace gets me started every single day. You see, we are called to love our wives in an unconditional way. We are. And, you know, like my wife was sharing, you know, that it, it, it was a process. You know, because in my mind, I thought I was doing everything that God has called me to do by cleaning, organizing, paying bills, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, doing everything that I think she, that would, I was trying to earn some brownie points. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thinking that, yeah, she's going to... She's going to see that I love her. But I, I believe this morning that God doesn't want our wives to feel our selfish love. But we need to go to God that he would pour his love into us and we give it to them. Yes, amen. You get what I mean? The Bible talks a lot about that, that love. That love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. A multitude of things. So what I learned is, you know, I was doing things with expectations that I would get something back in return. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I still do want something back in return. <laughs> but I'm in, a, I'm in a process, glory to be to God. I'm thankful to God that he hasn't given up on me. Amen. 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 That's something to shout about. Yes. You know, you know, and, and, and because now I'm learning like what she was talking about. Before, you know, we would go to stores, she would ask me last week, you know, what shoes, you know, I'm like, oh, that looks nice. Oh, that looks nice. They're the same, they were the same model shoe, just one had like a little color, you know? <laughs> and because in my mind, I knew that she wasn't going to hear me, so all she needed me to, yeah. you know, but before I used to get mad and frustrated, I used to be like, I just don't like going with you. But no, you know, I'm in, in, in standing in, 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 in faith and believing that God, would, and at first I wanted God to change her, but now I'm so thankful to God that he changed me. Yeah. Yeah. That he changed me. You know, because real love gives without expectation, and that is where the Holy Spirit comes. You know, and because the truth is that the flesh is still at charge at times, you know, that's when we'll have turmoil in our marriages. But when we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you, you, you tell me what could go wrong. You know, if your wife doesn't respond to you in a, in a loving way, you still love her unconditionally. Do you not remember a time when you were out there in the world and how you were acting and God still loved you unconditionally? How much not more does he want you and I to love our wives, to love our spouses? Because we are far from perfect. But when we're both in agreement and we're both under the influence of the Holy Spirit, my God, my God. You know, he would come and, and activate and do something in you that you couldn't do in your own ability and strength. John 15, 12 says, this is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. You see, right here it says that he gave a commandment. He didn't give a suggestion. That's right. He gave a commandment. Unconditional. And, and we are, are all disciples, right? Amen. Yes. So we ought to love one another. Yes. No matter what. In the same way that God loved us, we ought to love each other. If you abide in Christ and his word abides in you, then you will bear much fruit. And so, you know, when you show love, you know, to your wives, you know, because um, at times, you know, um, through experience, you know, I've had anger moments, frustrating moments, you know, um, but that is where the Holy Spirit knows and through surrendering, knowing that the Holy Spirit can help us love our spouses to the capacity that he wants us to love them. It is challenging, my friend. I know. 
I know, but you know, our our goal as husbands is to make sure that we're leading the way that God has called us to lead. Mm -hmm. And then when we're able to do that and God calls us together to go minister, to go, you know, um, um, evangelize, whatever it may be, it will be more effective. Yes. Why do you think the kingdom of darkness is so effective? Because when they come in assaults and assignments, they come in unity. And when you and I are, 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 are in our marriages are walking in unity, we're walking empowered by God. Amen. I know God is with me. And I know that you guys know that God is with you as well. He has given us the power to love our wives, you know, past their behaviors and vice versa. Because as men, you know, we're far from perfect as well. We got our machismo moments. You know, my, my wife has a sense of humor. I don't know if she does it on purpose or not. I love sports. You know, and it'll be the playoffs. And, and, and it's overtime. And she wants to have a conversation right there and then. You know, and, and, and there's, I struggle with that. But, I, I you know, we got social media where there was a few times where I'm like, I, I'll pause it. Yes, honey, what? I just wanted you to give me attention. You know what I mean? And, and, and that way, it'll be fun in your marriage. You know, I'm learning our leaders impart into us. Amen. You know, I, I, I don't just stay home. I, I, I love to stay home. I do. I'm not going to lie to you. I go, but, you know, it's good at times to get out and just do something with your wife. Amen. Yeah, you know, I, I um, I think because I I don't know how to be romantic. I don't. And once in a while, you know, God put it in my heart, just go buy flowers. And you know, and I remember I went, I showed up, and and from work, and I just go, I just want to, I just want to tell you I love you. And at that moment, my wife got emotional, and she, you know, she told me it, 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 it uppercutted me. She's not like, it touched me because you don't usually do that. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Amen. You know, so it, it, it is important, you know, to spontaneously, not just, you know, on an, an anniversary or, you know, on a birthday, but just spontaneously. Because at the same time, we don't know what they're going through. And as husbands, you know, we, we need to cover them with our prayers. We do. Amen. You know, just like how, you know, and when we do that, you will see how our wives would come and build us up to be all that we're called to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. And so, you know, I just want to just give me like about five, ten more minutes. You know, um, he wants us to love our spouses, but I want to talk about the developing process. And it's something that we're going to go through, you know, for a very long time. Romans 5, 3 says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Amen. And that was that time, you know, that where I, I remember I was whining and I, and I was crying, you know, and I, I, I was complaining of uh, uh, God, you know, changer, you know, but when I began to dissect this scripture right here, what Paul is saying is, you, you know, stop complaining about whining about the situation that's going on. But you need to learn to shout and boast in the tribulation that you're in. Understanding that you're in a process that God is doing something within that tribulation. Because we go, we're going to go through that in our marriages. And what's one of the hardest things for you and I to do in situations like that in our marriage is being thankful. First Thessalonians 5.18 says... Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants from you in your life in union with Christ Jesus. Amen. Tribulation. In our marriages, when we're going to go through that, it's like this pressure that God allows in our marriages to separate that what is good in you and that what is not good in you. You see, because God knows that in the long run that there are certain things that is not beneficial to our marriage. So he has to, he allows pressure, tribulation to rise up within our marriage to separate that what's not good 
from us. Amen. I, I know nobody wants to wants to know about tribulation or so that nobody wants to go to the suffering conference, but how many of you know to this morning that, you know, in marriage, we're going to go through tribulation, right. and it comes back again to two becoming one and doing what God has called us to do in marriage, in unity, as in one. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. See, that's how it was in the beginning for me. Because, as we know, Look at what it says in, in that one scripture. We also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. Amen. That's something that I didn't have. What it's saying right here is that you can endure cheerfully. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Right. That you can endure cheerfully. I look back at some of the things that I had to go through, the tribulations in my marriage that I went through, that I could look back and I could say, man, I go, that, that, that thing used to get me stressed out and she used to get me mad left. But if it wasn't for the tribulation that I went through in my marriage, I could cheerfully endure it this morning. It is that process that we go through. It is that process that, that you know, when that perseverance means that, you know, we would have a shout in our mouth. Yes. We would have a clap in our hands and a dance in our feet. Yes. I'm talking about, you know, when, that when things take place, it will not cause you to falter backwards, but will remind you, if God did it back then, he's going to do it again today. Yes. I was bitter and resentful towards God in the beginning. I remember one time like that. What did I do? God, didn't, what, what did I do? Did I make the right decision by getting married? But today, I could, I, you know that, that scripture that says he would give you beauty for your ashes? Yeah. You, know, you know what your time is in the book of Isaiah? Yes, yeah. In other words, you may not understand it while you're in it. But later on, he's going to give you a crown of understanding why you had to go through it. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. You see, because when we're going through a tribulation, glory be to God, it's not a permanent thing. We're just passing through. That's the right. question is, right. are we passing right. through together and one yes. as husband and wives? Mm -hmm. That's the most important right. thing because marriage is challenging. It might cost you some time. It might cost us some money. Maybe little stressful moments or tantrum. I have my little tantrums of my own. You know, um, but you will see, you know, that if you stand firm in your marriage when you are facing adversity, because in marriages, we got a lot of things that come against us in, in our own marriages, finances, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, responsibilities, you know, all these things, you know, we have to learn to be able to function together, you know, not to complain about situations, but to be able to go to God together, Amen. you know, that way, because I, I started off by saying First Peter 3, 7, you know, joint together, we do everything together, see, today, me and my wife, we could handle are today's trials because of what we went through or yesterday's trials. Yes. See, what we go through in our marriage, the trials we go through in our yesterday's trials, think about it, only prepare us for what we're going through today. And what we go through today in our marriage is only preparing us for what we're going to go through in the future. God is all about, he's not interested in your happiness. He's interested in developing his character in your marriage. Yes. That's what he's interested in. Going on to verse 4 of chapter 5 of Romans, and it says, Perseverance produces character. Marriage is a character, a character developing process. You know what character means? It means that you can be trusted. It means that you have been, you have been tested. You know, and, 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 and in saying that you think about gold, right? In order for gold to be purified, it has to go through a fiery process. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And some marriages gone through a fiery process. Amen. And they say that, you know, the way they purify it, they dig it up from the, from the dirt, 
and they put in a pot, they turn the heat on, and once it starts melting, the impurities begins to rise up and they skim away the impurities. Amen. You know, they skim it away until they, they, once, what they'll know once it's pure, once they look inside and they can see a reflection of themselves. Amen. That's how they purify the gold. Yes. So I believe in our marriages that God will turn the heat on and allow the impurities that don't belong in our marriage and he will skim it away. He'll leave that fire on. You see, the thing is, if you jump out of the pot, you know, in uh, 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 prematurity, you're going to fall right in the fire and get burned and hurt. But if you stay there and you allow God to remove the impurities in your marriage, when he looks in there, he'll see a reflection of himself in your marriage. Amen. I don't know how good your marriage has been or how you handled marriage when it wasn't good. You see, I mean, I, I felt in my heart and my spirit not to come and tell you how good my marriage is today, but to share with you what, what, what we did when our marriage wasn't so good. It's easy to shop when there's money in the bank. Amen. But you know what I want us to learn today is that we need to learn to glory in tribulations and unity in our marriage. Because God is doing something tremendously. He's always up to something. And you know what I've learned? I've learned that He doesn't slumber nor sleep. So ain't no reason for me to lose stress and, you know, to lose sleep over at night. I'm going to go ahead and sleep it off knowing that God has it all under control. Amen. You know, there is, um, how many know about farms? Maybe not too many, but our, um, wheat. You know, wheat, you know, when it's in the, when it's growing, you know, there is a shaft that protects the wheat, right? Mm -hmm. I'm referring this to our marriages. And, and, and that, that, that shaft protects the wheat through the developing stages. So once the, the farmer sees that, that it has matured, they grab the wheat and they put it in a round sifter. And they put it in there and they begin to agitate it. They, be, they begin to agitate it because what it happens is it separates the shaft from the wheat and that agitation is the process that it has to go through just like how at times in our marriages, we may be in that sifting process that if you are feeling agitated this morning in your marriage, I want to encourage you. You are in that process. You are in that sifter. Because what, what the farmer does next, they throw it up. The wind blows the shaft away, but the wheat comes down. They throw it up. That's what's not good anymore. It blows the shaft away, but the wheat comes down. Yes. 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 We are... At times in a sifting process. And when we feel agitated, I know I, I have. Yes. I know that God is doing something tremendously in me in order for me to love my wife unconditionally. Yes. Hope, verse 4, the, and character gives you hope. I'm coming to a close. I'm bringing my payment for a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. Hope is an expectation that everything is going to be all right. That you know, you don't know when, you don't know how, you don't know how he's going to do it. But somewhere deep down inside, you know that God has it under control. Yes. Verse 5 says, and I close, this hope does not disappoint us. For God has poured out his love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. Thank you. Amen. He's with you wherever you go. Holy Spirit is not an it, it's a him. Yes. He has personality Amen. and he has emotions. The Bible says, do not sadden his Holy Spirit. Man, I don't know how many times I quenched him and I sadden him with my arrogance in, in, in my marriage. But I'm thankful to God that, you know, when I surrender, his spirit comes and he activates within me because he is a gift to you and I. Utilize him. Utilize him. Let's bow our heads.